Hello. I am coming to you today on Oops, turn that off. Coming to you today on November 11th, Veterans Day. So, first and foremost, of course, I would like to thank all of those who have ever served our country. I am one who is extremely grateful and I certainly do not take my freedoms for granted. So thank you so much for your service to, again, not just me, but to our country. Um, we're a great nation and I am greatly appreciate each and every one who has served. So I'm going live today on Facebook. I am gonna give people just a few minutes to come on, but I don't like to wait too long because I'm always excited to show you what we're gonna make. So welcome to Creating with Colleen where I will teach you what to do. Some days I may teach you what not to do, but I always promise to teach you something. So what I am sharing with you today is an early release from the 2021 mini catalog. Uh, last week I came to you live and I showed you how to make this beautiful little card with the Curvy Celebration Suite. And I'm going to explain the whole suite again, just recap it. But this week, we are going to turn it into Christmas cards. So this opens as such. And this is only one of three cards I'm going to show you because in the designer paper, we have um, beautiful shaded spruce, Sahara sand, and cherry cobbler. And I wanna show you this card in all three uh, colors. So let's get started. As you know, the um, Curvy Celebrations is a suite that is featured in the new 2021 catalog. So Stampin' Up! so we don't have to wait till January 4th is going to give us um, an early option to buy. Yay! I love not waiting. <laughs> so what you have here, this is called the Quite Curvy Bundle. So the Quite Curvy Bundle, this is what is carrying over until the, into the new catalog in 2021. You have this beautiful set, it's 12 pieces, it is a photopolymer stamp set. And again, that's what I made our card with last week. Now it comes with a set of dies. And as of right now till January 3rd, you can only get the dies if you buy this bundle. So the good news is when you buy a bundle, you save 10%. So this will only cost you $41.25 to get all the dies and the stamp set. Now after the catalog goes live, on January 4th, you could buy them individually. But what you have, of course, is you have your dies that coordinate with the stamps, so it makes cutting them out very easy. You have this little branch that's a standalone die, but then you have these amazing border curves, and they are so much fun. I don't know if you can see the detail here, but in between the leaves, you have vines that are embossed. Love this little scroll, and of course, dots go with absolutely everything. So this is the actual bundle that is carrying over. Next you have what is not going to carry over, but what you can get now. Stampin' Up! came out with a coordinating stamp set called Curvy Christmas. And this set is a lot of fun. So you can purchase the Curvy Christmas stamp set for only $21. And of course it coordinates with all those amazing dies. And this is a set we are going to use today. So in addition to that, they have classic Christmas 6x6 designer series paper. And you have to remember, you get 48 sheets of designer paper, double-sided when you buy the 6x6 pack, and it's only $11.50. So the colors that it comes in is the shaded spruce, Sahara sand, cherry cobbler, and whisper white. But you get all of these amazing patterns from the hashing to the Christmas trees, to the sprigs, to the stars, these uh, spruce leaves, dots, diagonals, and the plaid. So this and the Curvy Christmas will not carry over into the new catalog. You need to get those by January 3rd if you're interested in these. So let's create. Okay, so as I showed you, this is a card that we're gonna create and it also uses um, the poinsettia place. So I'll talk about that when we get to our poinsettia, but this really was my first pick out of the holiday catalog. 
the dies are amazing, and I'll tell you about them in a little bit. But to create this card, you're going to have to have, you're going to have one piece of the shaded spruce that is five and a half by four and a quarter. Then you are going to have a piece of Whisper White cardstock, and I have mine folded, but basically it is going to be five and a quarter by eight, and then you score it and fold it at four. And then you are going to need a piece of your cherry cobbler uh, designer paper, and of course you have options on each side, but this piece here, I guess I could have left it on for you to see, this piece here is five and a quarter by two. So these are the pieces. I'll put them here in case you need to take a little snapshot to create the cards. Those are your dimensions. Now we're gonna need some cherry cobbler scrap and some shaded spruce scrap, but you don't measure scrap. You just use what you have lying around. Never waste anything. So what I'm going to do first is explain, you know, sometimes when people do a card, they like to fold the back piece. So the shaded spruce would have been folded. Hey, Miss Julie, I'm glad you could join me. Um, so you have your back piece, but a lot of times I like this look, but I like my white piece to fold. And that's why we did the dimensions that we did. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm actually gonna show you how to cut this, this border. This is your card, and as you could see, it opens like that but I'm gonna show you how to cut this. Now it's a little tricky because sometimes my mat moves, so hopefully it will behave itself, and if not, then one day I'll get a nice table with a nice top and we just won't even have the mat. But I'm using the new die cutting machine, so I'm gonna place my plates in here. For the um, dies, you use the base plate, number one, sorry that's so big, it's up there, number two, and then your clear plate, number three. Move my light back. Okay, so I'm going to open this up. And the thing you have to watch, um, hey Mary, hey Donna. I know I love shaded spruce cardstock too. So the thing you have to watch on these dies is where the cutting edge is. So it's gonna cut away everything on this side of the cut and it's gonna leave this beautiful uh, design on the top. So what I'm doing is I'm just gonna place it here and since my designer paper is about two inches, I don't want to come up much higher than that. So you can just eye it. I think cards, especially handmade cards, can be very forgiving. If it makes you nervous, well, go ahead and you can take your ruler. And at the highest point, you can just kind of say, yeah, yeah, that's probably two inches. So I'm going to set this down. And I always like to, especially this is so long and thin, I like to go ahead and... Um, put a, a post-it note to hold it in place. So I have that. I'm gonna run this through, and as it grabs it, as I said, my little mat slips, but I'm gonna put this through. And then when I pull my post-it note off, see how this piece here is nice and uh, crisp? Now hold on to that, I'll tell you a trick with that. And then this piece here, is going to have um, where my let me, um, little dies came out. So now what you could do, I'll get to this in a minute, I'll show you what I'm gonna do with that, but let's cut our poinsettia. Actually, let's back up and let's not. What I'm doing here, oh my goodness. is I have my mat and my little brush, and I can get all these little pieces out. Okay. And some of them you can still poke out. Now with this here, for some reason, it didn't cut out. This is the first time it happened. Must have been because I was live, naturally. All I'm gonna do is take this, I'm gonna put it back in my die, like that, because you can feel where it goes. I will get my embossing plate once again. In fact, let me take this out. Put it back on my plate. And then when I put it here, as I come through, just go back. 
and then all those will for sure pop right out. So again, I could just take my brush. There we go. So that's my recommendation. Go in, go back out, and you have it. Now since I do have my embossing plate here, let's go ahead and do our poinsettias. With the poinsettias, that is actually using the um, poinsettia place. So as I had said, this was my go-to bundle when this catalog first came out. I really had just fallen in love with it, and the biggest part was because of the dies. When you look over here, we have dies that match the designer paper, it matches the stamp set, but it also cuts and embosses at the same time. So this is on page, the actual set is on page 16. So when you see that these are white, we actually have a die that cuts them out. But you can see over here, um, this is an 18 piece die. This is huge. And again, bind the two together, you can uh, save 10% on your bundle. Now let me show you the poinsettia dies. As I said, they actually, um, you can just emboss. You can take this inside piece out and just cut the outline of the poinsettia from the designer paper. But what I like to do is I like to actually tape the two together. So this is actually two dies. Same here with the leaf. So what I've done, let me just pull this off. This part embosses, this part cuts. So I have an option. I can cut leaves from the designer paper or from my stamp set, or if I put the two together with a piece of washi tape, it'll wear out in time, but you just put another one on there, then it holds to do the two together. So I am cutting and embossing at the same time. So now what I'll do, again, I'll bring my embossing machine in. I'm going to lay my dies here because I can do them all at one time. One, two, three, four. There we go. And I will put this on top and I will just crank this through. And in doing so, I have my beautiful dies. And you can see how they are embossed and cut at the same time. So I've got one, two, three, four little pieces. So while I'm here, normally I have all this done ahead of time, but today I thought I would get brave and venture out. And I have to say, I really do like the emboss and cut machine. It is really smooth um, compared to our older machine. And for those who are wondering, the mini emboss machine, they were hopeful it would be out by the end of this year, but it looks like it will go into next year. Um, hopefully not long into next year. But manufacturing these days is not always an easy thing or a guarantee. Okay. So now that I have all my parts, let us continue. Now remember I told you when you cut this piece here, not to throw that away, because you can actually take these and now you can make snow drifts. You can stamp different things and it looks like, like I said, the snow. Um, and gosh, I hope we get some snow this year. Not a lot, don't everybody go crazy on me, but I do love the snow and I would love to see some. So to soften this up just a little bit, I am going to um, sponge it with my Whisper White and let it dry. Now Whisper White is a pigment ink, so it is a stickier ink, but what I like about it is when I put it on here, um, it actually even fades just a little bit. So you can see what I'm doing. Only because otherwise, sometimes I think the cherry cobbler can look a little bit flat. And I don't want anything flat on my card. So, I'll put that there is one. Y'all can just talk amongst yourselves while I sponge. If 
Who else has joined? Edith is here. Mary is here. Thank you, ladies, Donna and Julie. I do appreciate you all joining me. This year, the stamp room has gotten kind of um, lonely at times, so I am thankful for Facebook Lives, and I'm especially thankful for our Zoom events, because when you have a Zoom event, um, it's like you're just right here. You're just on the screen. And actually, I just posted this morning an event that I'm having on December 12th called My Holiday Staycation, and that is a Zoom event. So if you did not receive it, please go to my Creating with Colleen typepad.com blog and request my newsletter and you will have that information. We're going to have a great time stamping the day away. Got a lot of fun projects uh, ready to go. Okay, and I'll just soften up my leaves. Now you all know what's coming next. You already know that I am a huge fan of the shimmer paint or the Wink Stella, but the shimmer paint is always um, a lot quicker and easier. So I am going to throw these onto my cardboard. And this, if you don't know what the shimmer paint is, we sell it in frost white and champagne mist. So it's a little bottle. Um, it's a, again, it's also a pigment ink. It's a metallic ink. And I just mix it up with some 70% alcohol. You want the lower content. And then um, once you do that, you get this beautiful shimmer. So I shake it up. And if you're ever wondering what that noise is, in the bottom of here, there's a little ball bearing. It's like a little metal marble. And it was in there, so now I think I'm really cool because now it feels like I have a spray, uh, spray can of paint. Okay. So now what we will do is for our card, I'm gonna take the, um, five and a quarter by two inch piece of designer paper. And as you can tell, this is the cherry cobbler. And I am going to put this on the inside of my white piece. Oh my goodness, it's just one of those days. Okay. There, and then I'm going to put this on to that five and a half by four and a quarter piece of shaded spruce. So you can see how this card is coming together. Now, what I'm gonna do before I put my poinsettia on is with the Christmas set, we have some really cute sayings. So I am gonna take the thinking of you at Christmas with my shaded spruce, and I'm going to go ahead and stamp the front of this. And I always stamp, did you notice I opened that up? Some people will try to stamp like this, and when your um, cardstock gets pushed down, you're gonna slide. You always wanna stamp with it flat. So I'm gonna take the Thinking of You at Christmas. I'm just gonna hold my finger there and stamp that in there. And what's nice is it's also carby. So to put our poinsettia together, I'm gonna take my glue dots. And actually, I do want to give it a little more dimension so I can just take my bone folder and curl these uh, petals just a little bit. Don't want to pull hard. I don't want to pull it apart. I look at it like I'm getting my practice for curling ribbon since the holidays are just right around the corner. And please, nobody give me a countdown. That will just make me nervous. Okay. And then these, I kind of like to go this way. So I'm just going to take a glue dot. And I'm going to take the next to the biggest one. Put a glue dot on here. And then you just want to stagger them. So they um, take up the space in between them. You want to alternate these petals. So there's one. I got a glue dot on my finger. Two, well actually that makes three, because I didn't count the base one. And then this little one in the middle. And again, you think that's a lot of big shotting, but it's really not, because you can cut them all at the same time. Now the other thing I love in the poinsettia suite 
is these little beaded pearls. And they are gorgeous. So you have these pearls, they're already together. And once you put it on your poinsettia, that's just really what makes it pop. So again, I'm just gonna put on some glue dots and I will put that in the middle. And you can see just how pretty that is. I hope you can see the glimmer um, from the shimmer paint too. So with this, I will attach it with dimensional. And then I can put this over here, however I want it to go. There we go. Like that. That's why I stamp my words first so I know where to put that. And then with this, I again can just take a glue dot and put it on the back and put this on here. So you can see why this poinsettia was definitely one of my favorites. I mean, we have had some gorgeous poinsettia sets, but nothing that would make it like this. So I think we need a little more bling. Imagine that. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the small rhinestones and actually somebody had, I've never used this in. Y'all know this is our take a pick tool and this is a sticky end. I always pick them up from the bottom like this. And I want to, you could probably put them, if you see these little dots, you could probably put them on these little scrolls here, but I like them in between because I think it really offsets those. But I saw somebody actually use the sticky part. Isn't that cool? So it picks it up and everything right from the, the front. I thought I like that end for this even better. So I'm just putting them, alternating them in between and, okay, I'll put one more here. If you just peek, you'll be able to see it underneath that petal. So here you have a finished card. And again, you can write your sentiment up here. But I love the designer paper, how it can be used for these. So I promised you I would show you two more cards. So this is the one using the cherry cobbler. This is one using the shaded spruce, and actually I went with real red. So it just depends if you want more country colors for Christmas or if you would like to have more um, traditional colors. So did the same thing. I just cut the poinsettia out of the real red, sponged those edges with the white, and again, as it sits, it really kind of becomes opaque, which is really pretty. Thinking of you at Christmas, and then I wanted to do something that was really kind of non-traditional, and I'll show you a trick with that too. So here, you basically um, love, love, love this one. It's Sahara Sand in Petal Pink. So this is great, and if you notice, it's not a Christmas card. It says, always grateful. So I wanna show you really quick where I got that from and how I did that. So basically, we did a bingo event um, a couple months ago, and those who wanted to uh, purchase it, because this is what we used for our projects, this is a celebration tidying stamp set, and it comes with some amazing dies also. So not that cups of stamp set, but you can make boxes, you can make um, all kinds of things. In fact, uh, Joyce on our team page just made that. In fact, let me show you. That's the pleasure of working in your stamp room, is if you see something across the room, you can grab it real quick. This was a box, and I think she said she got the idea from Erica Serwin, but this was a box she made using the dies that coordinate with this Celebration Tidying stamp set. And then she stamped the side. But isn't that adorable? So, like I said, the dies themselves, when you open it up, you could have folded this in half, it could be a topper but she was even kind enough to give me some fall candy in there. So, thank you, Joyce Daniel, she did an awesome job. And if you're part of my team, you can actually go on our team page because she shared with us, again, giving credit to Erica. So, this is a stamp set, but what I did is there's a saying, always grateful. And as long as you have 
photopolymer. The red rubber, I don't think you can do it with, but our photopolymer is always flexible. It's the best thing about it. So what I did is I had taken my block, put it over where my curve was. Then when I mounted it, I just kind of matched the curve. So even though these words were intended to go straight across, you can um, bend them any way you want. So now I had the words, always grateful, stamped it with my curve, here we go. Stamped it where my curve was, and I have always grateful in the curve. So that really, really is uh, the benefit of having photopolymers, because you can bend them any way you want. So that is um, my lunch for you today. Again, showing you how we can make beautiful Christmas cards by just com um, combining the point set a place bundle along with the curvy Christmas. You can purchase these on my website. Uh, you can also go to my blog and um, purchase any of these things right now. And I hope you will. I appreciate your support so much. So next week, I promised you we would be showcasing this beautiful curvy celebrations um, all month long because again, it's an early release. And so you have your stamp sets, you have your dies and your designer paper. And next week, I've been thinking I'm gonna combine it with the star dies. We have an amazing set of star dies. And the designer paper, if you remember, also has a star pattern. So I think we're gonna have a lot of fun with that. So I hope you'll join me next week. Same place, same time, noon on Wednesday. And uh, if you have any questions about the cards or anything, please send me a private message or an email. I would love to help you any way that I can. And again, look for that special holiday staycation class on December 12th. That went out in a newsletter today. It's also on my Facebook page, so you can see it there. And I think for everything that 2020 has taken away, the vacations, the time together stamping, I think it will be a great day that we can make up for our time apart. So thank you all. Thank you, Stephanie and Edith and Donna and Mary and Julie. Thank you all for joining me today. And I hope you have a wonderful day and that you get a chance to get out and do something creative. Thank you so much, gals, and I will see you next week. God bless.